Hello, Booktube, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom, in which Lord Ganesha and I are taking you through the library tour to end all library tours. We are going book by book through my personal collection. <laughs> Who knows what it will end? Who knows how long it will go on? That collection is ever expanding, and we're not even talking so far about ebooks. Uh, but for today, we have uh, something a little bit different from yesterday. <laughs> this is Something Rotten, a fresh look at Roadkill. <laughs> this is by Heather Montgomery, with Kevin O'Malley's illustrations, which are all throughout the book. Virtually every page has a little, a little illustration of some kind or other. And this revolves, as you can tell, around the subject of Roadkill. Around the, the massive, massive number of animals of all kinds that are injured or killed on roadways all over the world. Uh, in the United States, it is by far the largest cause of death for animals, or for non-human animals. And, and also in the United States, in most states in the Union, there are strict rules about what you can and cannot do with roadkill. Uh, most states, I think, probably all of them, require you to have some sort of permit in order to deal with roadkill at all, whether to examine it or remove it or harvest it for food. Uh, and a lot of those restrictions also apply to uh, animals that are injured because they aren't, they aren't injured because they're taking a vacation with the wife and kids from upstate New York. <laughs> they're, they're wild animals. They should be rehabilitated and returned to the wild if possible. Uh, and this book tells you all about that. <laughs> it tells you everything you need to know about how safe roadkill is to eat, about what it means for the animals involved, about what it means for the motorists involved, about uh, uh, what we can learn from animal biology, physiology, and even evolution from studying roadkill. Uh, roadkill is for most people in the country, the closest they will ever come to one of these animals in a non-zoo setting. Uh, it, it's certainly, uh, it, for uh, city people who I have known, it is, if they happen to see a dead deer on the side of the road, especially if they're on foot, they're fascinated because they've never come near one of these things before. Uh, I read this book and really enjoyed it back in 2018. I, I don't know what possessed me, but I did pitch it around to editors to see if anybody would be interested in letting me review it for, for money, for a paying audience. Of course, no editor was interested in, in, in having me review this. And I, looking back, I'm kind of glad uh, that's true, because I would probably have been on record making a mistake about this book. I, I, I think I've mentioned this, uh, this book on this channel before. Uh, Rereading it, I realized something that I did not fully realize before, which is that this is for children. This is a children's book. It doesn't look it, and it's not packaged that way. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Heather Montgomery would say that it is not, but he, the reading is the key. <laughs> the reading is the test of such a thing. And it isn't just that she goes in for every cheesy joke in the world. It's that it, it is clearly pitched for someone with a grade school understanding of science, nature, logic. <laughs> so not, to, not to, de to denigrate it at all, I still really, really enjoyed it. But for some reason, actually not for some reason, it wasn't a mystery. I took this as an adult book, as a book made for adults. When I first saw it, when I first read it, when I first talked about it, I took it as a book made for adults because of its packaging. Which is, a, you know, a lesson to me on the power of packaging. <laughs> this is this is not a book for, for adults. Adults will enjoy it, but it's made for children. It's written at the level of children. Uh, I still enjoyed it. I, of course, am macabrely fascinated by roadkill whenever I see it. Uh, and this book is full of every detail imaginable that you could think of about what so about every subject under the sun connected with roadkill from the parasites that grow in roadkill and make and are one of the reasons why states usually uh states and countries usually strictly contravene your approach to it because there are parasites that can be very dangerous to you and especially to your pets that grow in roadkill and they don't waste any time in doing it all the way to for instance that there are several winged raptors who uh are among the they are among the highest rated animals for getting hit twice because a winged raptor will get hit by uh by a car when it's on the shoulder of a road or something like that or even swooping too low and will be injured but not killed 
and left to forage on roadkill, <laughs> meaning that it, they're, they're going to get hit again. Hawks are forever showing up as recidivist roadkill. Uh, all those kinds of details are in here. It's not a long book. If you're fascinated by the subject or think you might be, then even if you are an adult reader, you're going to enjoy this. I certainly did back when I thought it even was a book for adults. Uh, and that is, that is our book for today. It is uh, something rotten. <laughs> it's all about roadkill, uh, which goes all the way from baby animals who die quite often in roadkill because the parents are out foraging for food. The babies leave the den and have no idea what a road is. Their parents don't know what a road is. So just wander out. And uh, even the motorists with the best of intentions usually can't help creating roadkill. If, if an animal is large enough, they might be able to see it long enough ahead of time to do something about it. But a baby animal is almost certainly doomed. And uh, much though I don't want to upset Lord Ganesha, uh, Roadkill very much applies in India to elephants, uh, which is something I'm very happy to say I never saw in person. Uh, and once again, as I've said so many times on this channel on so many other subjects, there are videos on YouTube and I urge you not to look for them. Because once you've seen them, you can't unsee them. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> on, a, on a happier note, the book is a happy, cheery book. Uh, it, no, the author knows perfectly well that she's writing about a gross subject and does just throws herself into it. So, once again, as with so many of the books in the Library Tour of Doom, it is a recommendation. <laughs> so, so, I'm going to end this for now, but I will be back. <laughs> Thank you, Booktube.